education can take us into the studios of great poets at Buena High School. Through a VEP innovation grant, teachers are introducing living poets into the curriculum to deepen students' understanding of contemporary issues. The classes already read the poems and have started their text analysis. They're working on their own interpretations. In this class, Nicole Tong, a Jean Feldman Poetry Prize winner, connects with Buena students from her office in Virginia. She shares her motivations and challenges the students to reflect on their own. Buena's Language Arts Department is engaging and challenging their students through innovative connections beyond the classroom. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Charette and I'm here with my sister Julie Charette. Um, we're two former AP Literature students, so you probably saw us in the video. And um, it is our pleasure tonight to introduce our um, former and beloved teacher, Ms. Kelly Herrera. So, Ms. Herrera teaches um, AP Literature and Composition, as well as AP Language and Composition at Buena High School. And over the course of this previous school year, she applied and received a uh, Ventura Education uh, Partnership uh, grant. And she used this to introduce the Teach Living Poets project into her classroom. And tonight she will share her experiences with this project as well as share, as well as share its impact um, on her class um, with her seniors in AP Lit as well as her um, juniors in AP Language. So everyone give a warm welcome to Ms. Kelly Herrera. I'm going to talk to you about birds, taking chances, and meeting my people. My mom collected birds, not actual birds, but bird figurines, prints of birds, and little bird knickknacks. And after she passed in 2018, one of those bird prints now hangs in my daughter's bedroom. But it wasn't until a little bit later that I understood why those birds were important and how they would impact my teaching. I've been teaching for 20 years. I just finished my 20th year teaching, and most of, <laughs> most of those years, I've taught AP literature and AP language. Every summer when I get my scores, I reflect on what's worked, what hasn't worked so well, and uh, look at our instructional planning reports and make some adjustments. After the Thomas fire, I knew we'd have a little bit of a dip, but I wasn't prepared for the dip that happened. And so I knew I needed to make a change. And that's when I found Twitter and Teach Living Poets. And Twitter was the last place that I thought that I was gonna have changes. Um, I reached out to Susan Barber in Atlanta, Georgia. She is someone who helps manage a website called AP Lit Help. And AP Lit Help is a place where I had submitted uh, a lesson the previous years. And what she said is, you need to get onto the Twitter chats. And I thought, there's no way. And so every Sunday night, I participated in Twitter chats. And this is, um, I think, fast and furious AP literature teachers talking everything about question one, question two, question three for an hour. And so my husband would make dinner on Sunday nights so that I could do nerdy English things. And it was awesome. And AP Lit Chat soon led to Teach Living Poets Chat. And Teach Living Poets is managed by, it's a movement. It's managed by a woman in North Carolina named Melissa Smith. And the idea behind Teach Living Poets is to bring in living poets into your classroom. And it's, it's not to completely get rid of the canon. The canon is lovely and it's wonderful. But when we're talking about the canon in our classroom, we're, we're so often focused on literary devices and universal theme, but these living poets, they're alive and they're accessible and they're addressing issues of racism, of immigration, of identity. And it's things that are on the national stage and our students want to relate to this. And so I took a risk and I wrote a grant and the Ventura Education Partnership they funded that grant, and truth be told, I would have done it anyway. And so here I am talking about what we did in our class, and I'm gonna invite Julie up to read a poem from one of our living poets, and then I'm gonna get back to what I'm gonna say. Okay, that's on. 
Uh, my name is Julie Charette, sister. Yeah, you already read the whole deal. Um, this poem is called Good Bones. We actually read this in class, analyzed it. Um, it's by Maggie Smith. It goes, life is short, though I keep this for my children. Life is short, and I've shortened mine in a thousand delicious, ill-advised ways. A thousand deliciously ill-advised ways I'll keep for my children. The world is at least 50% terrible, and that's a conservative estimate, though I keep this for my children. For every bird, there is a stone thrown at a bird. For every loved child, a child, broken, bagged, sunk in a lake. Life is short, and the world is at least half terrible. And for every kind stranger, there is one that would break you, though I keep this from my children. I am trying to sell them the world. Any decent realtor walking you through a real shithole chirps on about good bones. This place could be beautiful, right? You could make this place beautiful. Thank you. Maggie Smith wrote that poem right after the Pulse nightclub shooting in 2016. A mother unsure of how to tell her children about the world. And so I used that poem in different contexts this year. I used it as nonfiction and getting students to sort of use it as an argument. To what extent do you agree with her characterization of the world? And I used it in literature also. There's, a, there's another poet, Natalie Centers Zapico, who wrote her answer to, uh, to Smith. And she wrote it from um, more of an immigrant's uh, perspective. And she wrote... Um, she shields her, or she, she tells her students, or her, I'm sorry, not her students, her, her children about the world so that they don't get deported. And so we looked at those two poems side by side for all of their beauty, and then we juxtaposed them in art. And so we're using living poets in such different ways. We use them in language and nonfiction to talk about um, just the rhetoric, the way that the authors look at message and their purpose. We use them in literature to talk about the beauty and the art. And with living poets, the poets are accessible. On the video, you saw our work with Nicole Tong. Now, Nicole Tong is one of the many poets that are willing to Skype with classes. And so we worked up to this. We read through her poetry collection, How to Prove a Theory. And so as we did that, my class got prepared, and one of the clever questions they came up with was, is your poem marathon a concrete poem? A concrete poem being a poem that takes on the shape of a poem. And what we learned is that Nicole Tong, she's an avid runner, and as she ran, she recorded that poem. So she would run off to the side of the road, pull her phone out of her jacket, and record a line. So the poem takes on the shape of her running. And these are insights that you don't hear from poets because they're not written down or recorded anywhere. Her poem, Grief Theory, written for her dear friend Anna, captures the last moments before her Anna, friend Anna passed days after giving birth. And it's just these little insights. Um, our story is written up side by side with Nicole's on the Teach Living Poets website with a shout out to VEP for helping us out. And Nicole says that our class inspired her. And so as she writes our new, her new collection of poetry, it's, it's in part to our Buena class. Taking chances with living poets is, uh, is something that's come about because there's no teacher's manual. As we dive in, I am diving in with my students. I don't know what's going to come about. With our Teach Living Poets chat once a month, we're workshopping through these poems and kind of diving in. Some of my students take part in those chats with us, and we'll dive in the next week together. But I don't know where the interpretation's going, and that's part of the fun. It's making me vulnerable with them. But getting out of my comfort zone is what's making me a stronger teacher. And my students deserve that. Our students in Ventura Unified T District need that from all of us. Two weeks ago, I went to the AP Literature Reading in Salt Lake City for the first time another risk I took. And I sat there in a cold room grading thousands of essays. And I got to meet Susan Barber and Melissa Smith, those people that got me on this path. And it was so encouraging to just know that I was doing the right thing. We were encouraged by our chief reader to take chances. 
and to do that for our students. And I know that everything that we're doing with Teach Living Poets and putting ourselves out there is what, what Ventura Unified needs. I think about where I've been over the last year, and I know I couldn't have gotten there without the support. And I want to bring the girls back up to read another poem. And it's from Clint Smith, um, another one of our living poets. And it kind of encapsulates uh, where my journey has been, and it'll make some sense. So the poem's called, This Was the First Year I Could Not Remember Your Voice, and by Clint Smith. I tried to imagine the phrases only you would say, but could only hear them falling from someone else's lips. I tried to imagine the stories you would tell me, but your laugh shattered under the weight of this grief. I remember the words you would say, but I don't remember the voice that said them. I remember you would call me sugar, but I can't remember exactly how the R melted when it met the air. I remember how you'd tell me, baby, the Lord is always watching, but I am forgetting how your accent cocooned the warning around my ears. It's strange how I cannot remember your voice, but if I heard it, I would immediately know it was you. Thank you. Smith's words found me on my first Thanksgiving without my mom. I was standing in the grocery store looking at a stuffing mix, and I couldn't remember what she used to buy. And I knew then that the holidays would never be the same. And when I think about my classroom, I know my classroom will never be the same. And when I think about all those birds that she used to buy and they surrounded me, I know now that this little bird that was sent into my life was sent by her, and in this case, the little bird was Twitter. Thank you.